just shy of 4.20 a.m. at Jay's Geek House. Tonight was worse than last night. I'm at wit's end with these 9 to fivers. Absolutely at wit's end. All I get from these people anymore is crying and sob stories. We can't hire anybody. Nobody wants to work for us. Blah, 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 blah. No. It's not that nobody wants to work. It's that nobody wants to work for them. And I've about had enough of all of this professional victim crap and watching people not stick around. Over and over. Oh, we're going to get pummeled. It's going to be 12 hour shifts. You're going to be working and sleeping throughout December. Whatever. Look. There is no such thing as a competent manager who's also a professional victim. When you decide to become a leader in a business, you own what you oversee. That includes the experience of what it's like to work there. And not just that, but what it's like for someone to be on your team. The experience day-to-day is part of what you agree to be responsible for when you take up a position of leadership in a business. And I am tired of the excuses. So we have too many nights like this. I don't get to have hobbies because literally all I'm going to be doing is working and sleeping. In an environment where there's all kinds of talk about work-life balance. And how that matters more to millennials, Gen Z, what have you. Spare me the melodrama. Why don't people just step up to the plate and take charge of what they're in charge of? Or do we need to continue having peak season after peak season after peak season after peak season after peak season season of the 50-something-year-old manager doing the dumbest jobs in the building because he can't staff his own building up. What's it going to take to stop this nonsense? And how is your day, ladies and gentlemen? This is Jay, a.k.a. Multimedia Jay. Needless to say, I am not happy. These are not hard jobs in this warehouse. There's one job, you're putting stuff in plastic containers. You're picking items, little bitty things. You pick the right amount, put them in the thing, send it down the belt. You stack boxes on pallets. Then you wrap the pallet and load it into a truck. You drive a forklift and do whatever the computer screen tells you to do. Not hard, not difficult, not fancy, not complicated, Can't find people to do this stuff. I have a hard time believing that. And that's my, and that's why I'm here so late. 4.22 in the morning. I am not happy about this. I'm not happy about not having time to stream, not having time to make videos, not having time to do anything because of this incompetence. And yet it seems like incompetence is the word of the day, no matter where it is that I look. Prior to all of this happening tonight and all of the crybaby stuff I heard about how we're going to be working 12-hour shifts in early December because nobody wants to work for us. Prior to all of that garbage happening, my day began with finding out about some grotesque incompetence on the part of Twitch. (sighs) Where do I even begin with this crap? So Twitch DMCA Mageddon title says it all. We're here to just talk about one very specific topic that has, it just ruined my day before it even started. I cannot believe that IT administrators in the year 2020 have this problem on Twitch. People who run Twitch's server infrastructure has this problem. What am I talking about? Twitch streamers are getting DMCA'd even after deleting their clips and VODs. So Twitch sends an email to people and they're like, 
Yeah, delete all your stuff or you're gonna get DMCA'd. Some people do that, they get strikes anyways. Why? Because it's possible, and I saw an example of this on Devin Nash's show. It's possible for someone with the link to your clips and VODs to just plug that into a slightly different URL and see deleted content, essentially by deep linking to it. Yes, I know what that's called. I know a few things about the 1990s. I lived through them. So to see a 1990s term like deep linking come back essentially but nobody's calling it that because it's 2020 now but that's what it is and this is something that robot programmers or whatever at the riaa the mpaa the esa the bsa rights holder organizations can program automated systems to crawl looking for copyright infringement and this stuff is publicly accessible why am I having this conversation in 2020 using 1990s terminology? Because Twitch, in their infinite non-wisdom, is so inept at running servers that people are able to do this. Maybe it's been fixed, I don't know. You'll get a HTTP 503 forbidden error or something if you try to do this. I hope that somebody scrambled, because if this is tolerated, somebody at Twitch needs to be fired. No, no, no quarter. Sorry. I will need the cold ones tonight. How do you screw up something this basic? Working for a, a major video platform like this. Yeah, it's Team Purple, but why am I able to talk about this in 2020? No, seriously, why? Why am I able to talk about this? It's possible, so instead of clips.twitch.tv or whatever, it's like media assets something.twitch.tv, you change the URL and essentially deep link to the video file directly. Now, for those of you unfamiliar with deep linking, let's talk about the internet back in the 1990s. In the 1990s, in the day and age of dial-up modems, text-based internet, and modems not even being 56K, it was a wonderful world where the internet was kind of its own thing. It didn't really have crossover with any kind of media like radio or television, the way podcasting, YouTubing, and other stuff, or even streaming does today. The internet was kind of its own thing because of text-based web pages with maybe graphics and maybe an animated GIF or something. But you had to... It was such a premium on your bandwidth in the dial-up days before 56K, especially when you had internet access that might be charged by the hour, like AOL or CompuServe or something. But once upon a time, in those days, you it would not be a weird thing if you used a web browser and there was a button that you had to press to download images. You'd see the text first, and if you wanted to see the, the images, you'd click a button, and then you'd sit there while the images slowly loaded in, because this was dial-up, and pre-56K dial-up. So, as netiquette started becoming a thing in the haha text-based HTML era on the internet, little traditions and do this, don't do this, things like that, and faux pas developed as well. One of them was deep linking. If you had an HTML based website, you basically could not deep link to assets on someone else's website because you might be interfering with their ability. Now you might, number one, any website that ran off of advertising, like so many things on the internet have done for decades, little pop-up ads or something like that. You'd be bypassing the advertising by deep linking to an asset in somebody's website. You would also be running up their bandwidth costs if servers had, you know, charged excessive bandwidth fees or something. So if you had something go viral and whatnot, the bandwidth cost would, would go through the roof. This is one of the reasons why in the pre-YouTube era, video would often kill websites that didn't have a lot of cash coming in. Because a video goes viral, 
the server is getting that many more hits, that many more resources are being used. And so what happens is, uh, so it sends the cost through the roof because of something somebody else is doing somewhere else on some other website. So that's deep linking became a faux pas. You didn't want to do it. And in some cases, I've actually seen people troll folks who are deep linking on their websites. So for example, there was one guy, he got so sick of people deep linking images on his web page. I remember him bragging about it in a forum and showing some pictures of this. It was funny as heck. So what he did, he took, he made a graphic with a big F-bomb laden rant, and he gave it the same name as one of the images that kept getting hot linked off of his website, FTP'd it up to the web server. And now everybody that hot, or everybody that deep linked his image had a giant F-bomb laden rant on their web page instead of the image they were deep linking. So some people took matters into their own hands to very funny results. But bottom line is, in the 1990s, on the internet, Deep linking was a no-no because you'd be sapping bandwidth and doing other stuff. Some people would even call it bandwidth theft. It was a serious thing that you didn't want to do. So the way that people are able to bring back deleted clips and VODs on, on Twitch is exactly that. They're taking... They're taking the old... Like the number, twitch.tv slash video slash that number plugging it into an alternative URL and it plays. So unless it's been patched, which I'm sure somebody was scrambling when this started going public earlier, but just the fact that this happened at all says everything that you need to know about Twitch's administrators. <laughs> so part of the ruse of Twitch is that Twitch is in any way, shape, or form purple YouTube. Twitch has the potential to be an evergreen platform, but it's not developed such that streaming ever gets off of its pedestal. There really is no reason to either host video on Twitch or watch videos on Twitch. Even VODs are questionable now in today's DMCA climate. But the big thing with all of this that we have to keep in mind is this GAF, this this IT hard this IT infrastructure GAF of people being able to deep link your deleted stuff. So it doesn't just apply to DMCA. You could have, for example, maybe you leaked some personal information or something like that, or you, there was something in the stream that you didn't want there to be and you deleted the VOD. Well, now, thanks to this lovely little system, people can uh, bring it back, so to speak, by deep linking to it. I just, I'm just dumbfounded with decades of deep linking being a faux pas on the internet, going all the way back to the 1990s text-based HTML era, with all of this, why is it possible to do this on Twitch? Why can you do this on Twitch? Why was this ever possible? Is there somebody that had never... Is there somebody working on Twitch's... Network ops team that never used the internet back in the 90s? Why? Why am I having this conversation? This is nuts. I shouldn't be talking about this stuff. And yet, this is pretty much what took over all the buzz and the discussion in the multimedia meta. Why, Twitch? Why is something this rudimentary? Why, if it's not doable now, why was it ever doable? Why? This is crazy, and it's thoroughly incompetent. I cannot recommend Twitch for anything. Try it as a sidecar platform. But all we've seen for weeks now is that, number one, Twitch doesn't have the systems to properly support its user base. Two, they don't have the systems to properly run a disciplinary system for their user base, which is a form of supporting the user base. Three, they can't even run a server properly to block deep linking and only allow people to, to view clips and VODs through the Twitch official interface instead of deep linking. Who's being fired at Twitch? 
No, seriously, there's somebody at Twitch who doesn't deserve their job. If they're not gone already, they need to go. How do you let something like this even happen? And that's all I have to say to that. Look at that. Sub half hour stream. Pretty much a YouTube video in disguise. And quite frankly, I don't think anybody cares. My day has been nothing but disappointment. Disappointment, disappointment, disappointment. The 9 to fivers disappointment. Twitch, disappointment. Stuff in the news, disappointment. This disappointment, that disappointment. And it's about time I walked away from all of this disappointment and just went and lied down somewhere for a while. I gotta go lay down. Yeah. I think after this much disappointment for so much of Wednesday, anybody would be disappointed into going to bed early. I'll leave this as it is then. Why did this happen at Twitch? And who's getting fired because of it? If it's still possible to do this without an HTTP 503 forbidden error, I'd like to actually see how this works without using someone else's links and see how long this remains doable because this should have never been doable in the first place. I mean, even just network security and things like that, the difference between an internal network and an external network, what's available on the internet versus what could Twitch keep an eye on internally for documentation purposes. I mean, in corporate America, you would have a firewall so that if you had somebody streaming, for example, you banned them, took all their content so it was no longer publicly visible, but the stuff you kept for documentation in case they sued you or something like that was on an internal system that the public couldn't access. But why on earth couldn't Twitch make that system that's been shown all over the place and paraded all over like, look, you can delete your clips and VODs, and you'll still get DMCA'd. Why couldn't Twitch make that not publicly visible? You know what? It's been a long night. I've been disappointed left and right, and I'm pretty darn tired. And I don't want to make myself even more tired by trying to think about how something this stupid happened. Peace out, ladies and gentlemen. Till next time, this is Multimedia J signing off. I hope your day was better than mine. Good night.